Good afternoon. My name is Mario Franceschini. I work for MR Franceschini Inc. here located headquarters in San Juan, Puerto Rico. Our team collaborates with preferred utilities when it comes to providing end users with reliable fuel oil handling systems here in Puerto Rico as well as regions of the Caribbean. I specialize in thermal energy systems, steam systems, even many parts of the Caribbean use fuel oil number two as primary fuel for their boilers, I have become quite familiar with fuel oil handling systems, including those servicing both boilers and auxiliary electrical generation systems. My aim the next couple of minutes is to describe my experience the last three years after the aftermath of Hurricane Maria, assisting designers and industrial end users revise and improve their fuel oil handling systems. We work very closely with end users uh, from the operational side and also with designers uh, dealing with all aspects of code and uh, proper design for, for systems. So I was able to get both perspectives and it was uh, quite fulfilling. I was born and raised in San Juan, Puerto Rico. So I'm no stranger to hurricanes, tropical storms, tropical depressions. But in September 2017, we had two systems, Hurricane Maria and Hurricane Irma. And Hurricane Irma passed by early September, just brushed us, but it was enough to affect the transmission and distribution system in Puerto Rico for the electrical grid. So many uh, utility customers had no power at that point. Then on September 20th, Hurricane Maria struck Puerto Rico right through the middle. So no county was spared. Everyone really was affected. And the uh, effects were devastating from an electrical perspective, uh, water perspective, uh, logistics of supply chain aspects uh, were also disrupted. Uh, my household had no grid power for about eight weeks. I was fortunate enough to have some solar uh, generation, some small batteries and a small genset that I was able to power my fridge and my freezer. So I was one of the fortunate ones. So we had about six to eight hours of, of strong winds. And then uh, we had the winds started subsiding. A typical scenario includes the electrical power company shutting down the grid as a preventive measure halfway through the storm. And once the wind, the storm passes and the winds subside, the power company electrical brigades will begin repairs immediately uh, using the available resources at, at hand. There was no way really of predicting the, the magnitude of this damage and the damage to the distribution and transmission infrastructure was so severe after Hurricane Maria that most ha households had no power for two to four months. Sourcing all the components and coordinating the repairs was no easy task. Uh, let's keep in mind that most of these repair materials had to be shipped via some type of marine transport uh, compared to mainland USA hurricanes where neighboring states can assist each other trucking materials and resources by land. Even after the electricity was restored to most regions, the grid was still unstable and reliable for some time. Rolling blackouts were a common occurrence. Uh, industry and commerce depended on auxiliary generators to power their operations. Diesel fuel oil number two is the most common fuel used for auxiliary electrical generators for both commercial and industrial end users. It's a fuel of choice based on the fact that it's readily available. It can be stored on site for emergency purposes. The generator's engine efficiency is superior. And when you compare it to gasoline, is less flammable and more stable from a storage perspective. When we look at a typical fuel oil handling system, we would see 
uh, main tank, storage tank, we'll have the fuel pump set, the heart of the system. We'll see day tanks adjacent to the end users, uh, fuel oil polisher or filtration systems, as well as multiple auxiliary components like sensors and valves that are recommended or required for the optimal operation of the system. In the next couple of slides, I would like to summarize some of the lessons learned weeks and months after Maria working with end users, industrial and commercial, as well as designers. Uh, for years, what we found was that many end users acquired pumps and some components independently with the best intentions, but had no official design of the system. And if they did, uh, it was not actualized for a system as a whole. A defined control strategy is critical. Most of these components have sensors, starters, and valves that need to be synchronized and work in harmony in order to deliver the fuel in an adequate manner. To give you an example, is the main fuel pump interconnected with the day tanks, main tank, and safety interlocks? If your day tank overflows, will you be able to stop the main pump set from running? How about pipe sizing? Are the supply lines, the return lines, and the day tanks to generator piping sized adequately? That needs to be taken into consideration. We also saw uh, lack of return lines to the main tank in some end users. Uh, and and these this return lines are our best practice, and, and I am a big fan of, of having them in place. Um, it keeps the pressures stable across the loop when the main pump set is on. And also, uh, having this return header is helpful when removing fuel from the day tank from a maintenance perspective for cleaning and testing purposes. So immediately post-hurricane, designers were mobilized to improve and document these fuel oil system improvements. Multiple facilities upgraded their systems. Some got new generators, but many were able to improve and get their systems actualized. And we had the opportunity to assist with these initiatives. We partner with many end users and designers. Number two on, on my list were end users that were experiencing pressure and temperature swings in their fuel oil system. Given some of these auxiliary generation components are only tested for a brief period of time, uh, sometimes not all end users have a chance to have a long-term testing. When I say long term, so I'm talking about days and weeks. So when you have all these components, and I'm referring to boilers and, and auxiliary generators operating at the same time for many hours and days and weeks, you start running into some temperature and pressure swings if your system is not uh, adequately designed. One example is the day tank fuel overheating. Some end users had that occur. Ideally, you would have a return pump that would send the fuel using the return line back to the main tank. That would remove the warm fuel and would replenish the main tank with cooler fuel. Also, pressure swings. When you have boilers and gensets that are all coming in and out and, and they have different flow requirements, uh, that could cause some pressure swings. We had uh, multiple end users that started using pressure regulators or, or replacing uh, pressure regulators that perhaps were not operating properly. And once that was implemented, that really helped out with the, the pressure swings. We also saw end users having control issues due to their high and low level sensors in their main tanks and their day tanks. So sometimes it's kind of hard to test those fuel switches because they're, they're submerged in, in, in fuel and some end users don't get to, to test them. Number three on our list is equipment undersized. 
we have been speaking about auxiliary generators uh, so far, but boilers are essential components in multiple sites in Puerto Rico. Uh, steam is utilized for hot water, is utilized for reheat coils, is utilized for sterilization, and boilers utilize diesel fuel oil number two. So, since we have the boilers typically using diesel oil number two, but now we have the gensets operating full time, some facilities share the main fuel oil tank and they share the main pump between the boiler and the auxiliary genset. Now that the genset is also requiring diesel for hours at a time, the system in certain cases is overloaded perhaps undersized with pressure fluctuations as fuel users come in and out. Another component that we found to be undersized in many cases was the main tank. Many facilities ran out of fuel. Um, many hospitals ran out of fuel. Most, most of these sites had uh, four to five days worth of fuel storage, but nobody thought the event could last this long. Fuel oil distribution was prioritized with hospitals being priority number one. I recall seeing the National Guard escorting fuel oil tankers helping expedite the delivery of diesel fuel to hospitals. In summary, everyone wished they had more storage because the logistics and coordinations to get the delivery of diesel uh, was no easy task. I had to actually uh, handle some of these logistics for our building. Number four on the list of lessons learned is equipment redundancy or lack of. Equipment redundancy was lacking. Many users uh, were using single pump systems. Many pumps fail due to maintenance, age, or other reasons. Um, sourcing was not easy in those first couple of weeks because the ports were, were pretty much controlled by FEMA. So sourcing uh, fuel pumps was uh, no easy task. Some level switches also fail for both high and low levels and many had no spare parts on hand. So lack of redundancy in those cases could really affect the control of your of your system and i want to mention that many of the systems are mission critical applications in the sense of for example uh, healthcare and pharma industry require autoclaves for sterilization purposes some of these autoclaves are electric but um, most of them are, are are steam driven and and they need the boilers need the 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 fuel and if they are electric, they, the, the genset needs, needs the fuel to provide the autoclaves with the, the power they require. So they, need, they, they really needed the, the equipment to operate and, and not having redundancy uh, was causing some, some issues for, for many end users. Number five on our list uh, is fuel quality. In many cases, we found that it was not optimal. Many tanks had uh, solids, they had sludge that caused unscheduled generator shutdowns, and then engine maintenance just became a frequent task. Most end users had some type of inline strainer, but in some cases, these devices would just get clogged frequently, and the end users had to intervene. So, in general, most sites lack adequate filtering and polishing for large quantities of, of fuel stored on their sites. One of the reasons for this uh, sludge buildup is microbial attack. This microbial growth is uh, accelerated by our warm weather and humidity, so it's prevalent in the area. Many industrial and commercial sites since Hurricane Maria now began installing automatic fuel filtration sets. And these units are, are self-contained, 
they're they're automatic they're able to remove water suspended rust dirt and other contaminants that could uh, affect the engine and they help maintain the quality of the stored diesel fuel this is particularly important in sites where the only user of fuel is the auxiliary genset so if you have large amount of fuel stored on your site but you're not recycling it frequently fuel filtration set is is recommended i hope this information uh, discussed today was useful it was um, it was an interesting couple of uh, months and at this point years but it's uh it's something that we have been able to address and now many industrial and commercial end users have uh, adequate operating fuel oil systems and they're able to run their generators uh, more gracefully and, and able to supply their sites with uh, auxiliary electricity generation so that they can operate and, and produce and manufacture their products.